Hello. Today is December 5th, 2020. And I have another, uh, well, well, another Dungeons and Dragons story, of course, but uh, it's going to be a bit shorter this time. Uh, at least I think so. Anyway, we'll see. But, um, so, among the many campaigns that I played with, uh, with my college friends, uh, with these college friends, uh, we also tried um, a bunch of other things as well. I'm uh, still mostly D&D, but um, some of these friends, especially one in particular, um, the one who was the dungeon master for the Norse and Greek campaigns, he is a fan of the Warhammer of Warhammer and Warhammer 40k. Now, uh, well, let me put this down first of all. Um, if you are not familiar with Warhammer or Warhammer 40k, um, I'll briefly explain what that is. So, um, they are, in essence, uh, war games. All right. Um, basically, they, you know, take a, you know, you have like this fancy like map of a battlefield. And you have all these miniatures and you move them around and stuff like that. Um, I think that is um, what Warhammer. I think that's what Warhammer started out on. I'm not an expert on the subject, but. Um, but yeah, basically, um, War uh, so Warhammer is a fantasy uh, game that's just like a very—it's a very brutal fantasy world. It's a lot of a ridiculous amount of lore and stuff like that to it. Um, what is arguably more intense? Maybe it is more intense than Warhammer. Is Warhammer 40k? Warhammer 40k is Warhammer, but for that 40,000 years in the future. So very much sci-fi, but it's um, people call it grim dark. Um, basically, which is a term used for, um, well, a dark setting that is just very grim, very bleak. There's like almost no hope at all uh, to, to anything. It's just, you know, getting in the grind and fighting monsters and that's it. Um, I, I suppose one could say that like um, dark, the Dark Souls games, Bloodborne, those could be kind of uh, different flavors of grim dark, I suppose. Um, it's just very brutal. Um, and that's what Warhammer 40k especially is. Um, I've had experiences with tabletop with tabletop role-playing game campaigns in both settings, but today I'm going to talk about 40k, um, a 40k setting. So um, this was still relatively early on in you know playing Dungeons and Dragons with these friends, and uh, actually this was at a point where this small friend group of four that we played Dungeons and Dragons with it expanded a little bit to include other people who happened to be living like in nearby apartments because we were all in college and, and everything. So, um, yeah, we, uh, um, the, the one, the dungeon master who especially liked, the person who, the friend who especially liked Warhammer 40k, um, he just really liked that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, I think it's cool too, but I try not to get too deep into it because I'm already deep in Brawlhalla lore and Absur lore, Dungeons and Dragons and, you know, a few other things, um, that's a rabbit hole I do not want to get stuck in uh, because it is very, very deep and also very expensive if you want to um, go all in on Warhammer 40k. Uh, with all the miniatures and the maps and the, the books and the stories and the whatever and the video games and all that stuff. But anyway, sorry, back to the topic at hand. Um, he wanted to make a Warhammer 40k campaign. Um, he and... Um, he and the dungeon master in charge of the Asian campaign, the one who is kind of like the Dark Souls of dungeon masters among ourselves, uh, the two of them work together to make a, a meld, to kind of make an amalgamation of Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, there are existing Warhammer 40k tabletop role playing games out there. Some out of print, some not out, of, some still in print, that kind of thing. They were combining these two into some sort of weird amalgamation that. Still doesn't entirely make sense to me to this day, but you know we made it work. It was and it was fun um, to play in the Warhammer 40k um, setting. Um, essentially, um, what was kind of the most the apart from some mechanics, the, the things that were kind of confusing to me, uh, were rather confusing to me, was the fact that like I, I was so used to like character creation at the time. I was I like maybe even to some degree now. I'm kind of like. You know, when you play Dungeons and Dragons, you get into that mindset that character creation is race, class, background. Like those are the three main things. Race is what you're born with. You're either born a human or a dwarf or a dragonborn or a tiefling or a half orc or a 
Um, or if you're going into other books like, like an Asimar or a Triton or something like that, that's your race. Your class is like, you know, your sort of adventuring type or occupation. You're either a, you know, like you're a human paladin or you're a dwarf wizard or you're an elf bard. Uh, and then your background is just kind of like, you know, what you were before you were adventuring. You know, you could have been a charlatan, you could have been a criminal, could have been an acolyte for a temple, could have been a hermit, could have been a guild artisan, that sort of thing. I was used to that. Um, Warhammer 40k is a bit different because not only, like, um, in the setting of Warhammer 40k, I'm not going to <laughs> attempt to explain Warhammer 40k lore. Um, except to say very briefly that um, the humans in this universe um, have developed to such degree that there are certain a certain there's a certain race of, of superhumans um, who serve as uh, marines, these super soldiers, and they're also like you know technical they're like um, priests of technology and uh, and everything. Uh, there are also kind of the elf versions of like space elves called called um, Eldar. Um, there's also an emperor over all the humans, um, worshipped kind of like a deity um, to, to all the humans and everything. Anyway, I could go on and on. There was this big her like a big turning point of this big heresy that happened. Whatever. That's not the point here. The point is, in character creation for this Warhammer 40k campaign that we were going to have, um, when you chose a race, you pretty much chose your class as well. Uh, because if you're a human... Um, you're going to be like a marine. You're going to be like these super powered marines. And so once once you decide you want to do that, you have to choose which um, like group or regiment you are a part of, right? And they all they had all these like crazy names. I'm not going to look I'm not going to look them up or anything. But you know things like uh, I don't know Shadow Hawk or like you know fire fire spitters and and uh, stuff like that. And it was I, I was trying to like. I was trying to like pigeonhole, trying to pigeonhole them to like, in my mind, try to understand and grasp what they were. <laughs> um, you could also be an Eldar in this uh, in this campaign as well, and there were one or two people who chose that, but most people chose Marines, and including myself, I created a character. Uh, I decided I, I again, like, even though I had already created a, a half orc barbarian for the Asian campaign, Dench Maravaldi, um, that's still not my style. And so, uh, like, at least not as much as, like, a bard or a sorcerer or, so or something like that. So, um, I decided to just try to go all ham on this. Um, I didn't even, like, I'm not even, like, as familiar with, like, these hard, like, you know, ripped, ripped guy, like, action movies as a lot of other people are. I haven't seen, even to this day, I haven't seen any Terminator. I know only passing references to things like, uh, like Duke Nukem or, um... Uh, or whatever and stuff like that. Um, I never really played Doom or or anything, or seen Fist of the North Star or whatever. So I was just kind of like, you know, I'll, I'll be this like really this guy who just really likes blowing stuff up and shooting things or whatever. I call him. Uh, I I gave him the name Maximilian Granado. Uh, Maximilian Granado, Max Maximum Grenades, essentially, uh, with the nickname of Decimation. So Maximilian Decimation Granado. <laughs> and just kind of like, oh, we're going to go and kill those orcs and uh, everything. That was the main, uh, that was the main antagonist, actually. Orcs are kind of like the uh, the evil fungus or, or like virus on the universe, essentially, or, on, or in the galaxy. Um, orcs, um, uh, uh, orcs increased, uh, increased their numbers with uh, spores and stuff like that. So they really were kind of like fungus that were, that plagued so much of the galaxy. And actually, it was, it was orcs with a K, by the way. Um, I really like Warhammer 40k orcs. That is one thing I'll give them, certainly. Um, I really like... Um, orcs have this uh, this fun way of talking, you know, and they, they have, like, you know, their different classes of orcs, like, you know, um, you know Tinker Boys, and, like, you know, um, they they pilot these, these mechs, they call them cans or whatever, or Fire Spitta, or stuff like that. We couldn't be an orc, though. You had to be, like, a marine or an Eldar, I'm pretty sure. Maybe there are other options. But, yeah, so I was a marine named Maximilian Decimation Granado. I also, um, I know this will sound I know this will sound bad at first. I promise you, the intention is not. Um, 
Maxim, so in, in Warhammer 40k, um, the divide between races was especially strong. Um, Eldar did their thing, Marines did their thing, and some and they, they had a common enemy in the orc, so they would sometimes work together. But because El because but because elves had all these powerful and amazing like mystical psionic powers, which are very different from how, from the more direct like you know kind of like machine technology guns and all that stuff that the Marines have, um, there is quite a bit of uh, animosity between the two groups, and so. Um, uh, I hesitate to say the word racist because that is a bit of a charged word in social media. But in this universe, um, you know, I guess you could say that there is racism between the two groups in that Eldars don't like Marine, the Marines, the humans, and the and likewise, the humans do not like the Eldar. And I kind of leaned into that uh, more with Maximilian Decimation Granado. He's kind of like, you know, why would I accept help from an Eldar? I could just do it myself and all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, besides which, uh, one of the players who was an Eldar was uh, Jordan, the one who betrayed the party in the "Here There Be uh, Here There Be Science Here Be Here There Be Dragons" campaign, and the one who tricked your hair into Nabular into not using magic for a while in the Underdark. So um, it was fun to kind of play, you know, have a bit of a, a silly rivalry there, bullying rivalry there between the two of us uh, as players. Anyway, what happened in this campaign? It was kind of short-lived, um, and again, I don't remember a lot of the like gritty details of this. But the the dungeon master, um, maybe if, um, since it wasn't exactly Dungeons and Dragons, maybe I should call it Game Master. Usually, when you hear the word dungeon, the term Dungeon Master, that's usually specific to Dungeons and Dragons. Um, game Master is generally the more general term for anything that's not. For someone who is who adjudicates the rules and the campaign for anything that's not Dungeons and Dragons, uh, so that's the convention that I tend to use in my language: Dungeon Master for a Dungeons and Dragons campaign, Game Master for a campaign in any other system. So anyway, um, that that seems to be what most people do anyway. Um, but it's it's not a huge deal if you mix it up or whatever, mix it up or whatever. Anyway, yeah, the campaign we it was basically kind of episodic. We had a bunch of missions um, against you know. The, against the different orcs, you know, kind of like um, building up to a showdown against like this main orc general, essentially. Um, there were a couple. There were a couple moments that I remember though. Um, uh, there's um, there's one moment that kind of, that became an inside joke ever ever since. Um, there was another. Uh, there's another player who also I think he was playing in Eldar as well. Maybe a marine. I can't remember. But we were in this jungle area. And um, Decimation uh, plowed forward as well as this other player I just mentioned. Um, the two of us plowed forward, like in the jungle, even you know, despite the risk of guerrilla warfare and that kind of thing from the orcs, like ambushing us. Um, there was this huge mech, like you know, with these claws and everything, and they, you know, in this brutal battle, like, it grabbed both of us, me and this other player. Um, and actually, be like before that happened, um, the other player was saying like. He was, bit, he was trying to be cautious, but he also wanted to get into the action as soon as possible. And <laughs> so he was saying he was saying the phrase, I, I'm, I'm hanging back. We're like, what are you doing? Why is it attacking me? I was hanging back. And so ever since then, it kind of became a um, it kind of became an inside joke to like, you know, if someone if someone's in trouble, um, uh, and you, you kind of can say like, you know, why weren't you hanging back? Or like, you know, shouldn't have been hanging back. <laughs> Uh, that kind of thing. Um, what ended up happening was that character and Decimation got decimated, both of them. Uh, they both got killed by this mech. Um, despite those casualties, though, uh, the Game Master uh, had Decimation come back. Um, uh, he became, like, um, his consciousness became part of some, like, um, machine-type thing. And so, like, he just, like, in the next session, just, like, came crashing down... Um, as this like robot essentially, and I said decimation is here, and it, it was that was an epic moment of you know decimation coming back and like evolved like from uh, basically you know his superhuman marine form replaced by this machine essentially, uh, which I thought was pretty fun. Um, uh, certainly a natural progression for Maximilian Decimation Granado. Uh, so yeah, you know grenades, flamethrowers, you know. Machine guns, all, all that kind of stuff. I had that to play with, and that was fun. Um, 
the um, also the the game master. Um, uh, this is also the first time that we, as a group, used um, a map, a digital map on a screen. So, like you, you know, using an HDMI cord to connect a computer to a um, to like a TV screen to show um, the map from the top down. You know, sh he, he uh, the game master pulled a bunch of maps from different um, like Warhammer 40k things or whatever he found, whether it be like a, a desert fortress or a um, or a, a jungle outpost or something like that. Um, and we kind of say where the enemies are and where we go and stuff like that. Pretty cool. Uh, worked out pretty well, I think. Um, and actually, like, um, it was a bit of a different, a slightly different, like, play dynamic. Because usually when you play Dungeons and Dragons or similar games, you're sitting around a table with the game ma uh, dungeon master having some kind of, like, small, like, short screen to cover their dice and their books and their notes, right? Um, the, the game master for this one had uh, everything on their laptop. Um, and also like some notes that they wrote and their stuff. We were just sitting around like in the couch in the living room. There wasn't a table, really a table between us. Um, the game master just kind of like going between his notes and the and the laptop connected to the TV and everything. So that was kind of that was kind of fun. Just like a, it was it's almost like watching a movie together, except we were the movie. <laughs> um, but but yeah, um, the final session, like I said, it was short lived. It was, it was probably like maybe about half a dozen sessions long or something. Um, it's just like a couple months, um, short and sweet, I think. Um, but yeah, we went. To, we were all going against this uh, orc fortress, and uh, yeah, we just kind of went from one enemy to the other. And there's this formidable orc general thing, maybe not general, but some big orc baddie um, with like a big like mech or something that we had to fight. And. Uh, uh, also, I should mention that uh, Jordan's Eldar character also got killed, so um, he replaced that with another Eldar character who is related to the deceased Eldar. Um, <laughs> I mentioned last time, pretty sure it was last time, yeah, for the Here There Be Science, Here There Be Dragons campaign, that um, Jordan's character betrayed the party at the last minute, um, and that that was not the last time he would do so. This is the second time it happened. Um, I don't, again, I, it's been too long, I don't remember the specifics, but he essentially, um, like, his character went up to the orc and just kind of, like, uh, agreed to serve the orc, and the orc was kind of, like, confused or whatever, and we're just like, dude, what the heck? <laughs> um, it, it wasn't, uh, that betrayal wasn't as dramatic as the last one, though. Uh, the last one ended up in that explosion that teleported people to different planes of existence and everything. Um, and that one, uh, we eventually beat the, the big baddie and everything, and, um, and all was, uh, good. And, you know, our, our, our characters would go on and, you know, fight more orcs in the, in the galaxy and all that stuff, and the campaign was over. So, yeah, that was our, um, that was my first, um, experience with, uh, Warhammer 40k, Warhammer 40,000. Uh, would not be my last, as I'll explain in future Decembarian videos. But, yeah, fun nonetheless. And uh, I think I will conclude there. So, um, as always, thank you for being here and uh, listening to this fun sort of rambling story. And, well, I'll see you tomorrow. And uh, until then, take care. All the best. <laughs>